<laughs> you know what? That that was That's amazing. a great. <laughs> I might have that as my intro. Was that an apple? That's ASMR great. with Pranav. <laughs> Lift him right into things as well as this interview. <laughs> Hello, one and all. Welcome to the AM Filmmaking Podcast. Today I'm joined by my co-hosts, Habs and Adam. How are we all doing? I'm good, mate. Shit, How are you doing? Great... <laughs> Amazing. After that great, intro. Great, great um... intro. I-, I couldn't have done it any better myself. Thank you, thank you. I do my best. I thought I'd do something different, so I'd let Pranav, like, obviously start off with a massive big bite out of things. Um, so, lovely. <laughs> Um, just for the audience's reference, Pranav, please tell them what you are munching on currently. Well, you see, I've got some grapes in front of me. I've got some orange. Mm. I've got some kiwi. And I've got a nice sunny weather outside. Lovely. You've got a nice, so. a single sunny weather, yeah? Yep. A singular <laughs> sunny weather. <laughs> Did that vitamin D in there? Or is it yeah. vitamin C? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think so. It's, it's a... <laughs> I uh, know I only got an E in science and I will admit that <laughs> so I have no idea what Oof. all this means apart from a pool test because I do a lot of that at my workplace so I know what pH and chlorine is and everything like that that's good okay calm down water white <laughs> that's all I know it's just water <laughs> we're 75% water by the way Ooh. did you know that it's a fun fact Wow. I thought it was eighty percent to be honest. Okay, I could be wrong. Hey <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> could be in our next pub quiz. Anyway, so today we are going to be looking at uh another comedy film. It's our last one for Monday. Um it's called Airplane, which was made in nineteen eighty. It is a comedy parody film about a man who is afraid to fly and he must ensure that the plane lands safely after the pilots become sick of food poisoning. Oh, that's a bit of a spoiler already. <laughs> but before we get into the movie, um, just, you know, same, same old, same old this week. I mean, nothing much has changed again. Yeah, still indoors. Um, there might po- there'd be a possibility they're thinking about it, that they might lift some of the um, bans on shops. So some shops might start opening, even though, a lot of people are against it, mm. so that might happen during the next week. They've uh, started doing vaccine tests, I believe. Um, mm. People in Oxford or persons in Oxford, so we're all sort of looking forward to that or hear the news towards that as well. Yeah, the the vaccine thing is ri- I, that was really quick for me. Um, I th- I thought that was going to be later in the year, but obviously. It- this early stage, it's only like the poor, in reference, they're called guinea pigs having to go out to test. You know, they're, they're the mm-hmm. ones having to put their lives out there. It's going to take months to know which is going to be the proper vaccine and everything. What's your thought on the 5G conspiracy? Well, the fact that apparently China... Wait, what's the conspiracy? Well, apparently the 5G um, towers are the ones that have caused this. Because... um. Apparently, the areas where the antennas were have had way more um, coronavirus cases. <laughs> I, I I never <laughs> heard that theory, but I did hear a theory. This is this is one that I was going to share. Is that mm-hmm. China released this vax this virus from Wuhan because mm-hmm. let let's take it back because China, like Beijing and all that, that they haven't locked down, which theoretically that should have been the first capital city to lock down and the china to yeah. to be contained the the thing is is that the, i think this virus was sent out for economic um supremacy because if you look at Ooh. if you look at all the countries right now including the us united kingdom their economy mm-hmm. is plummeting like apparently it's lower than it was since records began which is Mm -hmm. scary but if you look at china that they haven't been affected well the thing is 
China, if you look at some of the figures, they are outright lying as well. Mm. Apparently, some of the sources um, from the US that are undercover in China say that they've had more than 40,000 deaths by now. But they're only showing that they've had 4,000. I think that, again, I think we've had this, we've said it before, where that number, 4,000 from where it originally originated, that is more or less seemingly impossible. Mm. And it doesn't take, you know, a rocket scientist or even, in fact, any scientist at all to sort of figure that out, you know. it's It originated there, and therefore it would have a greater impact, you know. So them having 4,000 deaths, it seems a bit unbelievable, if you know what I mean, guys. Yeah. And and the fact that, like, you know, like, none of, none of the, uh, like, chi- Chinese, like, uh, politicians, they... They ha- they haven't even had any cases in their whole cabinet. Um, Beijing only had what about fifty cases maximum. And another stat that's a bit weird is that their death rate is what below two thousand or something like that. It's it's nothing. And w- like my, my even my dad believes that this this virus they they have a vaccine. They they just tried they put on a sh- they put on a show I think, and. Mm-hmm. The, you know Wuhan ne- next to um, where the outbreak officially started. There's a um, lab testing facility. Yeah, the virus some um, research one, isn't it? Mm. And they reckon it might have leaked out there. Or potentially they made this, yeah. so it won't like kill off everyone, but it will ensure that you know when things go back to normal, like say next year, China will have overall economic control over everyone. That's just my theory, you know. <laughs> and you know what? I just uh, obviously everyone keeps an eye on the news, but obviously they're saying it's a very sad day mm-hmm. today, regardless of how nice it is, because it passed the uh, twenty thousand mark for the persons who passed away in the UK today. Mm. Yeah, and mm. some uh, you know some articles have been labeling it, or it's been called out as worst case scenario. So, situation, regardless of how bleak it is, I think a lot of people still sort of are coming together because yeah. the challenges are still there. You still see a lot of people donating and doing their part for the society and just trying to do, you know, the little bits here and there to try and make it easier on, you know, all the key workers. Mm. In other news, um, Kim Jong-un is in a vegetative state, the Japanese media says at the moment. Mm. Apparently, what does that mean? So apparently, um, he one of the doctors struggled to insert stents into his arteries after he collapsed. So sources are saying that apparently Kim Jong Un is in a vegetative state, so he's alive. But you know when they're just um alive on machinery. Oh, so in like a coma or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, I pulled it up right now on my phone. He. This is after a heart surgery. China sent over doctors to check on the health of Kim Jong Un. Damn. So that's the latest, latest update about eight hours ago, and there was something else an hour ago. And it's so, worrying because um, all these other countries would not want another dictator. <clears throat> that's why um. North Korea are probably keeping this underground at the moment mm. because. If it turns out that he's died, someone else would need to replace him, and none of the countries would want another dictator. Mm. And like, I'm not being funny; it's just come to my mind. If, like, say, if the worst case scenario, you know, Kim Jong Un does die, like, if the sources are correct, like, can you imagine, like, North Korea? Who would North Korea blame initially? Who do you think they're going to blame? And that's going to be China. Whoever the wherever the doctor was from. Mm. So. Mm-hmm. Um. But in in other news, like I know, I know that there's there's just loads of news. I think I think, you know, it's just just to be a bit more funny, you know, I I think whatever's happening in America is absolutely ludicrous. I mean, <laughs> they're, they're they're all reopening. They're saying, have you seen mm-hmm. the video? There Go was, to the beach. It says COVID nineteen's a lie. We want our hair salons back. You know. Yeah, they're holding um protests out on the street saying it's all right to be outside and it's like are you are you okay <laughs> are you know crazy it's crazy actually you know what they have to if they decide to go out they have to sign a waiver that says they are um 
sort of, you know, putting aside the risk, essentially, and it, they're taking the responsibility of what happens to them. Hmm. I can't remember where I saw it. They have to actually sign a, a piece of paper or something like that that says, I hereby declare that I'm going outside at my own risk and therefore hmm. relinquish um, any medical aid or whatever. Yeah. And I, I kind of read that and I was like... <laughs> I just sort of like my brain started hurt and I'm like, <laughs> can you lot just stay inside? It's not that hard. Yeah. Bro, it's crazy it's considering insane. they don't even have the NHS there. So if they oh, get they it, have to pay for medical. It's exactly. It will cost them like $20,000 or something to get through it. Yeah. It costs them a mortgage to actually get help, you know, healed over there, basically. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. plus, if you, you know, I'm sure we've all been to America at some point. We've all seen the houses there absolutely freaking massive you can do a game of hide and seek and <laughs> it would be so hard to find each other mm. i just i'm just thinking just just stay inside and you'll be better you, you'll honestly be okay but no they want to protest rights or but, yeah. or you take the donald trump suggestion by injecting uh, some debtor into your bloodstream <laughs> oh, oh. Um, you know I what that. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I read that as well and funny enough i saw a, a tweet on on Instagram, the screenshot it says, "Do not believe the president. Do not <laughs> inject yourself with Detto." I'm like, "Fuck God!" It sake. was trending number one on um Twitter yesterday. The whole bleach thing yeah. with Donald Trump. That that's the Dang. new meme. That is literally. There's a lot of memes coming out. You know, got the coffin. We got <laughs> we. Another meme is that now America have. This is another American joke. They got too much oil because oil prices have. <laughs> It's, it's now costing them to have oil. I like <laughs> if you go and if you go and fill your car up at petrol in America, you're gonna get twenty five dollars back because they don't need it. <laughs> They're paying you to take. <laughs> They're paying you to take petrol. Please. you need to see their stats. It's ridiculous. <laughs> just get a whole bunch of jerry cans and everything and just start yeah. filling up, like rinse them out and then start selling it once you're you know in a better position. It's it's jokes. It's jokes. Go into your savings, grab a grand out of it, go buy a bunch of fuel, come back, sit on it, wait for the world to go back to normal, and boom, you're a millionaire. You've literally struck gold. Mm. But um, yeah. So like, any Americans who are listening into this uh, podcast, obviously, like, hope everyone's safe out there. And I know it's a crazy time in it, but just keep you guys safe. You know keep indoors like e- even what like the government like says the government. just just keep your distance and that's the main thing i know it's exactly different. and it's weird how coronavirus this is already a dead meme but it's still around <laughs> wow <laughs> anyway the memes on and, the and virus you, itself and you said stop. the word you said the dreaded word i hate you. i did i said you the said c the word. word there you go the c word shall i try and, shall I... yeah i'm gonna beep, beep it out i'm gonna yeah, beep it out beep it. okay yeah beep says, that out. or just put knee above it <laughs> Nee. Oh yeah, I might just go nee 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 nee. Do that, and I will just put it <laughs> over the top of it. <laughs> I can't wait, mate. Anyway, so today, um, apart from apart from all the news that we talked about, we talked about it for a good like fifteen minutes of it. Um, we are going to be reviewing uh, uh one of our final comedy films, which is Airplane. Um, you know, like we said in the title, is Obviously, a man learning how to fly a plane um, who's had a bit of flight experience after the pilots become sick. Um, It was written Mm -hmm. and directed by Jim Abrams, not to be mistaken by JJ Abrams, please. And I mean, I did some, I tried to do some research to think this guy was the father to JJ Abrams. And then I realized, oh no, it's not Abrams. He's Abraham. He's Abraham. Jim Abrahams, David and I was going to say there's three Jerry directors Zucker. for this movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, J- David and Jerry B- uh, Zucker and Jim Abrahams. Mm. Yeah, I, I thought I said Abrams for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep that in there. Don't worry. Oh, yeah, for fuck's sake. Um, yeah, so so don't get confused like me. Um, so we there's not really many famous people in this film i mean i think the most famous is actually the doctor leslie Ni- Le- leslie nielsen um yep. he's actually done a lot of comedy films since this so he's done the naked gun uh the forbidden planet 
superhero movie of his was probably one of my favorites actually where he plays the grandpa mm. i don't know if you guys have seen that movie um with the dragonfly it's like one of those spoof superhero movies as it's in the title <laughs> yeah but yeah yeah and so. oh yes yeah, superhero movie right no yep. I, it's it's similar to scary movie that's uh where mm -hmm. i remember him from mm. that's the one i saw so i was like oh gosh there he is again is he gonna piss out of his hand mm. spoiler <laughs> Right, he's he's done he's done tons of movies though, tons yeah. and tons. Um, he's got a lot under his belt. Yeah, but um, yeah. So, what do we think of this movie? Um, Abs, do you want to start off? Okay then, righty <laughs> <laughs> Um, I did I did like the movie. Mm -hmm. I I like the sort of it. I like how. It was similar to um, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. It had that sort of spoofy, wacky silliness going on, which I, I like. Uh, I think we've all established we all kind of like that. We all like the memes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, quoting Prana from last week, there were a lot of memes in this, certainly. So I did, mm -hmm. I did enjoy it. Um, but I won't go into too much just yet. We'll wait for the full, you know, full... Uh, review to hit, so I'll just get everyone else's opinion in the meantime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I if I'd like to jump in there, I again, it was like watching Monty Python all over again. Um, but I must say, this is like, I like without giving any spoilers, but the dialogue is fantastic. I mean, and and the way they pulled off some some of those jokes, I, I you know, some some mo majority were expected, but you wanted to see like what what was going to happen as such but i i i really like this is my type of humor you know it's it's the art of um once again it's physical comedy which we've talked a lot about in our podcasts of how you know we we describe things that are literally happening or made to be seen um but prana for you like you know do you, you seem to have hmm. You seem to have gone quiet. Do, do you have a few mixed <laughs> opinions about this film? I'd say, yeah, I'm kind of sitting on the fence for this one. Um, yeah, it's got a lot of jokes, a lot of um, dad jokes humour, where it's like, here's the joke, or where it's like, oh, I'm hungry, hi, hungry, I'm dad. That kind of joke <laughs> in this movie. <laughs> Obviously not directly that joke, but a lot of jokes play out like that, where it's like, um, oh, a hospital, what's that? Or it's a building where you keep patients, but we'll go into that later. <laughs> um, but on the other side, it's like, the movie was quite dragged out and mm. a lot of the jokes but like a lot of my negativity for the last three movies was also that some of the jokes get dragged out mm. so it is it is a difficult one for me this one so i'm trying not to say anything just yet about the movie mm -hmm. um just because i do have a little bit to say in hindsight to it um that again i think i'm, I'm going to be on pranav's side with this one i'm on the fence with it Mm -hmm. mm. Because when we were researching movies, um, obviously we did this one because we've not none of us watched this one before. And whilst we were picking movies, I obviously went through lists of um, top comedy movies, and this was on top of a lot of them. But I think this was kind of overhyped for me. Really? But when I was actually watching, I was like, ah, oh, hmm, maybe that was the reason why I didn't enjoy it that much. I was expecting a lot more from the movie. But like you said, the script-wise, it's actually great. Yeah. Sorry to burn that. <laughs> no, that's all right. Um, but yeah, maybe it's because we, you know, we watched this. We watched Monty Python, which was arguably one of the best comedies of all time, and then we jump into this. You know, uh, you know, it, it, this film was made five years later, but we jump into this film where it's, you know, it, it has its moments. It has a lot of moments, to be fair. Mm -hmm. But I, 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 I definitely see where you're coming from. And it depends, again, comedy derives from certain people. You know, some people mm. like comedy about certain drugs. So you go and watch Pineapple Express. Some people like comedy on, like, vast dictatorships or other countries. So they'll go and watch Borat or The Dictator, for example. Everyone's got a palette. Sorry to cut in there. Yeah, yeah. But I think this this kind of like comedy it it is stated as a comedy parody, and um, because mm -hmm. I think we're going to get into spoilers now. But I think this film is very good at kind of taking the piss out of other films, which 
it's never this is one of the first films that's ne- it's never been seen on cinema before i mean right from the get go b- before we get the titles you know it, it it takes the piss out of jaws which was obviously a 90, 1974 <laughs> film with the iconic music and they use the um end wing tail of a plane to go through the clouds to make it look like it's a shark fin <laughs> and then it jumps out of you and then it says airplane and then you know and it's 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 one of the first parody films and the main film that it's taking the piss out of is um a a um it was a real life true story disaster movies i think it's called airport mm-hmm. airport 1975 it has many elements from yeah. it i think it was I think I think it was a TV show or a series of films. I wasn't quite sure, but it was basically spoofing everything. And to dig into like one of the first facts is actually this movie was a remake of a 1957 TV movie called Zero Hour, um, which it was obviously about comedy on on planes. Out, out, you know, it was taking the piss out of it. Um, and they and most of the budget was actually sent to bought out the rights for the companies who made that uh, show. So, right, it even had a airplane two in 1982, the sequel, which mm. is quite interesting. I was I wasn't quite sure what that one. I think it might have just gone off more jokes off of airport, but that was the main um, kind of focus for this film. And I can see it did a lot. Um, like most movies, this one must have done well. It did do great, and then the it second part completely flopped. It got <laughs> really two stars out of five that I can see here. Wow! So not as great as this one. So it was a pre- it pretty much these films are like a hit and miss, and and this is probably why yeah. you guys are on the fence with this film, which like I I would agree. I I can understand why, but at its time this was. In the nineteen, the whole nineteen eighties decade, this was the fourth highest grossing movie uh, during that period, which is astonishing. And it's still in, it's still in the top four hundred films of all time, in in its popularity according to IMDb. Um, so there's quite a few facts there. I was about to say that it, it had a budget of three point five million, so mm. a lot more than if we compare it to the last movie that we reviewed, to Monty Python. Mm. And I think. With that budget, they could have done a lot more. Really? I think so. Considering, I think, I agree there, considering how much Monty Python actually, you know, how much they managed to do, how much they did, and how great um, the Holy Grail was off a very small budget. I think if you have a big budget, like three and a half million, in comparison, if we're just going to do a quick sort of return comparison to it Mm -hmm. you can see that they should have been doing a little bit more in certain areas but Uh, you know i would disagree with that because i think there was a lot of money that got went into it i think the special like if i was starting off with a really big positive the special effects for it i thought they were fantastic i thought they near to matched you know the the quality of like say star wars which um, it was around that time when uh, the original trilogy for Star Wars was being made. But I thought, for me, the, the majority of the, the money, in my opinion, m- must have gone straight into effects, you know, to get the plane to land. And, you know, all, like, and, and there was, don't, don't forget, like, even in the flashback scenes, to go into those different, like, areas to, you know, to get, to get, like, a whole flashback of them dancing on dancing onto the table and there was there was there was so many stunts to mention as well i mean i think my favorite so maybe, maybe they could have been smarter with the day with the way they spent their money then because um well if we, we could keep we keep comparing it to um holy grail they spent their money a lot smarter and they spent on um the things that they need to spend it on this movie they spent on like the plane crashing crashing through the big window or um the landing scene so I feel like they did have a lot more money, but they kind of spent it on the fancy stuff. I think if they spent it a bit more on um, maybe the joke setups or the other things, it would have been a bit funnier. How can you spend instead of just the 
How can you spend money on jokes though? Because it's, it's up to I don't the writer, know, just make isn't it? The movie funnier. <laughs> hey, hey you know mate, what? hey, hey mate, oh. hey mate, can I can I lend you a dollar and you make this joke like the best joke ever? Like, how does that make <laughs> fucking sense? No, you know, you know, you know what it is with this with this film. Let's uh, the thing is, I won't sugarcoat it. With this film, as you mentioned, money went towards buying rights, did it not? Yes, rights and special so effects. That's, rights and special effects but it feels like a lot more money went into making the rights mm. rather than mm-hmm. making all the film okay because if we if we compare it you know the money raised in holy grail it was what 200k if i'm wrong yeah about 300k mm-hmm. yeah 200 300k right and look at how much they accomplished everything they accomplished um from set design to animation to literally everything yeah they had budget budget cutbacks and whatnot but they still made such a great film the thing is this film don't get me wrong there were certain bits which i liked it the entrance i found that hilarious but Mm -hmm. you have to imagine how expensive just buying that jaws intro theme was and that's even with a budget three and a half million dollars that's still a lot of money to try and pay exactly. off for and the think... intro theme for such a big film. Sorry, Pranav, go ahead. Yeah, no, it's fine. I think it would have been funnier for me if they just, instead of spending all that money on um, like the plane crashing scene where the wheels come off and stuff, if they just had a guy there holding a toy plane crashing into the floor. That would have been <laughs> way funnier for me. That, than... that, that, I can imagine that would have been funny. That's and... a good idea, actually. I, I, I was going to mention, like, but the, the, the thing is, like, especially with the plane crashing like, at the end, like that that that's necessary though like i i get where you're coming from in terms of a monty python perspective yes they could have just you know they they could have got like a little pl- i remember when i was little i had a little playmobil set of a plane um, and a little yeah. airport and everything they could yeah yes i agree they could have remade that but still i i i think it's still necessary because there's no point because you were saying like you know what what else could they have spent money on but like you can't go and copy oh if monty python like the group did that there's let's like kind of snitch their idea they will we'll do something spoofy and funny because they'll be like well they're kind of copying that idea don't you think but the thing is you either go all out spoofy or you go all out technical you can't be midway you can't like have like an avenger level like i don't know special effects and then try and be a spoof movie mm. it, it doesn't work That's for me work. It, it's a really hard thing to pull off a balance between spoofy and amazing techniques because in a spoof movie the whole point of watching it is so you get b-tech versions of everything you yeah, see in true. an a-level version of it if you know what i mean yeah you've got <laughs> avengers if you're going to compare avengers and something else say dc I find, DC. You know, DC. dc yeah <laughs> yeah DC. marvel and dc avengers, <laughs> avengers and dc yeah marvel dc that you know that sort of comparison avengers is your doctorate and then there you have your you know b-tech version of, <laughs> sorry dc you can come defend yourself but <laughs> Ooh, you that's, absolutely that's a bit harsh isn't it? you were atrocious no no they were absolutely atrocious in that um bat, uh, what's it called in justice league i felt yeah. like ripping my own eyes out of my socket dc fans are just stopping. clenching their fists I right now Bro, say, <laughs> if you want I if know. you guys i know you're meant to be social isolation but like if you do want to host a riot outside abs's house more than welcome <laughs> oh. I'll, I'll leave his address in the description but go ahead abs i'll give you the batarang <laughs> <that I have. laughs> you give me the batarang adam if you do that yeah expect you to take ticket money from everyone <laughs> this will be one hell of a show oh, mate i'll make a I fundraiser them off tooth. i'll do make i'll do 100 and nail with them i'll do 100 laps around my garden and i'll raise 20 million pounds to do that <laughs> 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 but okay right going back to it but okay look in a realistic comparison avengers and um dc that kind of spoofy levelness like you you want to see half drawn up scenes you want to see just everything taking the piss out of you want to see them giving the middle finger to what everything the other guys did yeah and, and i, I would have rather them spend, spend more time on the writing instead of all these special effects just pay your writers more. <laughs> but one of the writers was the was Jim Abrams. <laughs> he's he's paying himself, no? <laughs> pay him more. And he was the exe- <laughs> he, was, more. he was the executive producer. <laughs> so he's the one with the funds. <laughs> 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 oh, 
Okay, right. So I think it's established. If I lend um, you two dollars, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's established that um, Jamie Abrahams, you should not be in charge of any money whatsoever. Wow, <laughs> he was in the film as no. well. You know, but no. If I'm if I'm being honest, I did like the scene where they broke the wall, though. Sort of um, in in the introduction scenes where mm. you know you get your Tannoy speakers arguing, <laughs> Betty and Vernon. <laughs> That was apps like <laughs> that was for a movie that I'm, you know, that I found hard to like at some points. That had me reeling. He's, you know, she turns around and goes, "You just want me to get that abortion, don't you?" <laughs> <laughs> what the... It was absolutely was... crazy. Again, that was a near near spit take moment. I was drinking water at the time, and then I just get the <laughs> coming this out. Do not mouth. drink water whilst you're watching comedy movie. <laughs> I'll never learn, bro. I'll never learn. <laughs> but that was quite a smart scene because um they were introducing the cast whilst they're doing the whole speaker thing. Mm. So you could see all the um people that are going to be in the movie. I, I thought it was funny as well that I, I I like the whole setup of the guy who was meant to be a tax I think it was the main character, his name's Steve, and he set up the um Ted. Ted was it Ted? Ted Striker. It was Ted, Ted Striker. Oh shit! I'm getting my actors wrong, isn't it? <laughs> this is bad for a filmmaker. God damn it! Um, Adam's Adam's just feeling a little bit groggy. He had one too many last night, boys. Oh uh, no! I was, I was acting drunk, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, but um, Ted set up the reel. You know when they're counting how many uh, dollars they make for their taxi service. I I like the whole setup. You know, this this guy is still probably waiting at the airport for Ted to turn back because as the movie progresses, the, ta- the taxi guy... The fare's are like a grand or something, isn't it? It's 11k I saw. <laughs> and he's still waiting there. Um, I did like the little end scene. I was kind of waiting. I watched through the whole credits to see if there was going to be something about the guy again. I just had a little hunch. They might include him right at the end. And they did. They delivered. I must admit, I didn't actually stay to the credits because I had to then go and write my notes. Ah, <laughs> oh, you missed the no, don't spoil, don't spoil, don't spoil it. Okay. Don't spoil it. I I'll, I'll go and rewatch the credits for that. Um, but the, I thought you go rewatch the five second scene. <laughs> but I thought that was a really good spoof throughout the movie, and that, there was a lot of like lots like that. Um, one joke that keep kept reusing was definitely um, when. Ted is talk yeah, is definitely Ted when he's talking about his flashbacks back yeah, in the war. Yeah, when mm. back in the war and back about the love of his life, Elaine, Absolutely. and his drinking problem. Yeah. That was my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> he just chucks water at his face. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's gonna be my drinking problem next. <laughs> forward. So they lit. The dialogue was literal, as in, if he had a drinking problem, he literally couldn't drink. As in, mm. if anyone has not seen the film. The, the the guy the guy's drinking problem quote marks was he couldn't drink a glass of water i he would throw throw it over his mouth and he would try and like catch the water particles in his mouth <laughs> <laughs> trying to do yeet yeah literally yeet <laughs> Yo, yeet and that's a really good example of a character trait where you can actually describe a character by you know, just one thing. If if I had said Ted Striker, yeah, he had a drinking problem. Um, <laughs> if I said, uh, for example, the pilot um, Captain Over, I'd say he was a domestic paedophile. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. He just kept asking so many weird questions to that boy Jimmy, or Joey his name was. And yeah. I was thinking, what? Why are you hanging around a gymnasium? <laughs> Why are you asking him if he likes boys? What's wrong with you? You know, man? funny thing. I normally <laughs> save my facts for later, but I might as well say my fact now, mm-hmm. um, since we're in that um, part of the story. So when that um, Captain Over asked the young boy if he'd ever seen the inside of a cockpit um, before, <laughs> um, in the original line, it, um, actually, he was supposed to say, have you ever seen a grown man's cock? <laughs> 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 but it was ultimately deemed um, wow. too risky <laughs> and the line was changed and I like how they brought it back like when the media were investigating you know this plane is about to crash and you know they do the 
the, the newspaper spins, they give all these headlines, you know, in a classic way. And then the third headline, it says, boy found in a refrigerator, <laughs> left only eating his hand and his toe. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the picture of Joey. <laughs> so it makes you question, what the hell has this pilot done? Did he jump off the plane <laughs> with this boy? <laughs> Where's Joey? Funny enough, you don't actually see him at the end of the movie either. He doesn't. You don't see him go down the slide or anything. He's just disappeared completely. He's in the ref. He's in the refrigerator. <laughs> he's probably still in there. <laughs> yep. He's probably like, what forty. Yeah. Forty years old now. Probably he still hasn't learned. Yeah, a lot of um literal comedy in the movie. Even like when the news reporters are like, "Let's get some pictures, boys," and they literally go to the walls and start taking their pictures. <laughs> <laughs> That was hilarious. I I was like, are they actually going to get there? Oh, for fuck's sake, they actually took the photos. <laughs> it, it pans to the right, and you're just like, don't tell me you're taking the photos. Oh, for fuck's sake, they're taking the photos, man. <laughs> By taking the photos, we mean they literally go to their walls and take their photo frames literally, off the walls. Literally. They, they <laughs> yank them off the wall and carry them out the door. They're like, come on, boys, let's get the photos. Uh, yeah, ye- yank, run. And, a, and another literal scene, which I think it's probably this, this, I don't know, this, this particular moment was when the kind of saying came in is when Ted said, oh, shit, oh, shit has really hit the fan. And then we cut <laughs> to the office <laughs> to see shit literally. literally hitting the fan. And is is another, um, so what basically that means is th- things are going really wrong. Um one of the writers didn't like that line um, because he th- he thought, in quote marks, people aren't going to laugh at that. And for me, that was actually one of the funniest moments. I I personally spilt my drink when I was like, <laughs> saw that. A lot of budget went into that shit in the fan scene. Can you imagine <laughs> how many times? It, imagine that was done in a one take. If it wasn't in one take, that would have been amazing. Well, but, um... <laughs> it leads to my second fact because... I hope they only did it in one take because the second fact is that was actually real shit. I can imagine. (laughs) That was real shit hitting the fan. They did not, it wasn't special effects. That was literal shit. I don't know whether it was human shit or anything like that, (laughs) but I hope they only did that in one take and everyone held their noses. I need you to find out if it was real shit, like human shit or not. One one second, let me search it up right now. Was it human shit hitting the fan in airplane in airplane 1980 i really hope it was i don't think it was it looked like a sheep shit if i'm being honest i need to know what kind of shit it was (laughs) (laughs) tell me (laughs) you know what if a human came up with that much dump in one moment bloody hell Well, I'm surprised actually that it was oh, real shit. Like they could have used anything to not make their set stink. You know what? I'm not surprised. I'm I'm not surprised. I, in the back of my mind, I saw that and I was like, "Bet you that's real dumb, dumb." But since we're talking about scenes, why don't we talk about our favorite scenes? I, I don't really have a favorite scene, but I have a favorite. I'm gonna say a favorite character, which I think yeah, favorite character. I think it's the Doctor, Doctor Ram Ramar, who's played by. Um, Leslie Nielsen. Leslie Nielsen himself, actually. Um, I thought he was fantastic. I mean, some of his lines, like I've I've got them in quotes, was just absolutely funny. For example, Remark asked the captain or one of the stewardesses, what are we having for dinner tonight? She goes, well, you had a choice of steak or fish. So, like, he's investigating. He goes, oh, yes, yes, of course, I remember. I had lasagna. It... (laughs) It's very much his dialogue, very much replicated what Monty Python's dialogue was like, in my opinion. It was it was that sort of um, evident disregard for the question altogether. Mm. You know that, that scene, the pilot kind of sort of turns away and goes, "Oh yes, I had lasagna," but <laughs> realistically, he had the fish. <laughs> <laughs> You the fish, you see the fish bones to the side of the plate and you're thinking, ah, oh, shit, here we go again. <laughs> and his um, line where um, Ted goes, surely you can't be... Se- well, well, no, he goes, surely you can't be serious. Wait, who says that? Yeah, 
yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He says, surely you can't be serious. And he's like, I'm serious. And don't call me Shirley. Shirley, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite lines as well. And that was voted as the um, 79th best movie quote by the American Film Institute. Wow. <laughs> so there's another one, the Shirley one. <laughs> I think my favourite part of his character, though, is when he he comes into the cockpit and he's like, OK, Ted and Elaine, we're both counting on you. We, you're <laughs> going to do us proud. He shuts the door in a dramatic way. Um, and then the plane, the, the plane is midway crashing. So the camera's really shaking. And then the doctor comes in again and the camera's still shaking, like really violently <laughs> saying, Elaine and Ted. We're still relying on you. Please do our country proud. And he says the exact same line. He comes out. And then... We're like, counting on you. Elaine and Ted, good luck. We're counting on you. <laughs> I'm close the door back again. And I'm proceeds to do that three more times. Yeah. While everyone else is getting whiplash. <laughs> just, just unperturbed by everything else going on around him. And he's just stood there like a rock in the middle. Staring you <laughs> down going, good luck. We're counting on Even you. once the plane lands. <laughs> yeah, that's like, what I mean. Good luck. <laughs> the plane lands and he goes, Elaine and Ted, we're still counting on you. <laughs> like, but he was a good example to be, he, he was meant to play this like kind of serious role. And the, the writers just decided, you know, fuck it. He, he's not going to be serious. You know, for example, it's like, uh, one of the lines is like, you better tell the captain we've got to land as soon as we can. This woman is, has to be taken to hospital. Elaine replies, a hospital? What is it? And Ramak goes, it's a big building with patients. But it's not, <laughs> but it's not important right now. <laughs> it's that blunt comedy, though. I, I think it had, like, don't get me wrong, for all the downsides it had, that was a good piece of, you know, that was a good piece of writing. Mm. And um, another line, actually, um, that uh, Leslie Nielsen's character says is where he's explaining all the... Uh, symptoms of the disease we don't know what it is oh yeah but it's it's that sort of end bit where he goes until the poor bastard is reduced to a quivery weighted piece of jelly <laughs> <laughs> and you just see the captain just going this <laughs> is just having a foot on fit in his chair and then oh shit and they have to grab him out and take him out and all that kind of stuff i, I think yeah that and a similar scene to that is when um, they try and cheer up the uh, ill patient in the uh, airplane. <laughs> when the, uh, I think it is it Elaine. She knocks her life support. Um, the, what, what do you call it? Oh no, Randy. It was Randy. Wasn't yeah. It? Oh, it was, it was Randy. Randy. It was Randy. She, she uh, Lorna Patterson. Yeah. Oh, I'm, get, I'm getting. I'm getting everyone confused now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's playing the music, and then it just slaps the life support machine. <laughs> tube out of <laughs> and she starts like oh, having a mid midway seizure but what i thought was just what made it really funny is that no one gave a single fuck about it because everyone was like listening to music like yay and she's like they're like half passing out like a, a convulsing and pain <laughs> and everything while her mom's just in the back going yippee kaye motherfucker it was very it was think... sorry Prana, go oh on. go on no go on I, I thought please do sir okay thank you sir um, I, I do that a lot i cut in a lot i don't know why i do that <laughs> but, um it, it, it's actually quite dark comedy some of the jokes in it not gonna lie um you know for like if we're going back to the flashback scene when he's finishing off his flashback the people just committing suicide <laughs> Because they the listen. first old lady hangs herself. <laughs> I was just like, finishes it. <laughs> literally, I was like, first of all, I was like, what the fuck is, oh my God. <laughs> like, yep. You know what? Actually, there's, that happens, I think, until three times. First with the lady, and then it happens with, I think it's like a Japanese war veteran. Yeah. Um, or something like that. He's, he fully commits seppuku. <laughs> just, just, he just he's got a sword i don't know how he's managed to get a sword on an american airliner but he just you know just stabs himself then you've got the indian guy in the turban light just puts <laughs> yeah. he's got a tub of fuel and oil just pours it all over himself and then he's got a matchstick in his hand and he lights it and he's two seconds away from <laughs> you know go you know blowing himself up or whatever and he looks at the guy and says, go do the airplane, go save us. And then the guy takes a deep breath and boom, out of nowhere. Yeah. It explodes. I'm like, 
how did you survive the explosion? Didn't wouldn't that crash the plane? <laughs> <laughs> but again, that, was... yeah. Like, but what I find funny about that scene is actually, you know, it's that anticipation. Like, you're not concentrating on him about to save the save the day you're concentrating on that guy not going to blow up <laughs> and i think what's what's made that scene even more funny is that he actually blew out the match so to say to the audience ah, oh, you, you don't need to worry he flicks the match and then all you see is a bright white light and he's just dead <laughs> um oh man no, speaking of favorite scenes i'd probably say my favorite or my favorite characters were probably the two guys Two black guys speaking jive to each other, <laughs> where um, the little captions pop up at the bottom and they're say, <laughs> explaining what they're actually saying. Yeah, but they're saying. And then, um... Yeah, go on. Go on. No, no, go on. <laughs> and then the old lady as well, when she comes to translate for them. <laughs> I think that was just one of my favorite scenes, I'd say, in that movie. Mm. Yeah, no. I... Didn't she start talking jive as well? <laughs> if I yeah, remember. Yeah. She spoke jive with them, yeah. And then they tell her basically to go away for some reason. <laughs> knows what they said <laughs> she's like he said that he's in great pain and he wants to know if you can help him <laughs> and then she replies to the just hang loose blood she go and catch you up on that <laughs> rebound on the med side <laughs> that, that was jokes i must admit the conversation between the um two guys and the old women was probably my favorite because even when they're like what is a big mama my mama no raise no dummies i dug a rap <laughs> <laughs> Copy some slack, Jack. Jump to what? No help. Jump to get the help. <laughs> oh, and, and, and it was you know, actually the old lady who said that, didn't she? She was trying to diss yeah. them, isn't it? <laughs> She's like, "Copy some slack, Jack." <laughs> oh, man. She says, "Um, Jaivas dude, don't got no brains anyhow." She. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Is that elongated? She. She, man. <laughs> Right, actually, you know what? Track and back a scene. One of my favorite scenes um, was the one in the bar where, oh, yeah. you know, with the first sort of story of how he met um, Elaine. How he met Elaine and all of that stuff. I'm just, funniest thing about it is, well, for one, it's like a little skit. All these like flashbacks I found, they were like little skits sort of scattered all over the place, which I did enjoy. Um, you know, that's like a little bit of Monty Python in there, the little skits. I do enjoy those. Um, another thing about it was, is suddenly the bar becomes a nightclub. Mm. And those two girls who fight over a game, they're still fighting right until the end. Like, they were fully going at it, toe to toe. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure one of them died at some point. Well, the, <laughs> the body was chucked on the, so the nightclub had finished and they're still slow dancing. And yeah. all the tables are stacked, and her dead body is chucked. And they were actually yeah. scout girls. They were actually guides. So, um... yeah, I've never, I've never been more scared of scouts in my life, man. I saw them fight, and I was like, "Yo, bro, <laughs> they're vicious. Let's take it back a notch." Vicious wasn't doesn't even cut it, man. They were fully like punching into the liver and everything. Like they were taking <laughs> liver shots for days. <laughs> and it's not the liver shots you want. You want vodka shots, not actual liver shots. Hmm. <laughs> Mm. But, uh, the, the, I think one like we're all forgetting. Oh, go on. No, you go on. No, you go on. Because I, I was going to end it. No, you say it. You say it. You say it. <laughs> no, I was saying one of the lines that we're all forgetting for the movie, um, which is like the most memorable line that a lot of people remember and quote is like, um, I like my coffee how I like my men. Flat. Black. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> which was that was a shock for me. That, that was a, a lot shock. Of movies I was not that expecting line. that. Are you kid. He was so <laughs> literally was it joey again i think it was joey no, again. i hope I it was, it was i'm just going to joey no oh, no it was a different... speaking to the little girl um no it was a, a different, different guy speaking to the little girl yeah. oh, i wish it was joey it was then he would be he would definitely have ptsd <laughs> in that refrigerator it was it was <laughs> rossi harris playing joey and some other guy called david hollander Oh. Uh, as the young boy with coffee and his face when he heard that <laughs> was downright he hilarious. Was shocked. <laughs> He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, you know them ones where you're on playground and you go, oh, ma, I'm telling. <laughs> uh, but there, there's so many funny scenes in this and the, like, like we keep saying, it's the dialogue and some of the characters are really good. 
Um, but nearly talking for this movie for yet again another 40 minutes, th- th- like there is actually, like, even though I love this movie and I would definitely watch it again, there were moments where I, 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 yeah, I would go, yeah, I, if, if they cut like this bit out or they even cut a single character out, that would have made the film better. And when I said character, one character that I did not find funny at all was the support guy to who was the controller guy who was trying to get in control with them. Um, I don't actually recall his name. I think his name was like Kramer. I think it was like something. We're talking about Kramer. Yeah, I think it was the bald guy, the the campish bald guy. Oh no, that was Johnny. oh right. Yeah, Johnny. Johnny, that's it. Fuck Johnny. <laughs> that, you're honestly <laughs> you not find him funny. <laughs> he was not funny at, at the beginning. He was a little bit funny, but then at you know the one scene that just one moment that just pissed me off is like you know they're trying to land the plane and then he takes out the <laughs> takes out the light switch and the, and he's like oh sorry that was just me i'm just like w- why just like i know this <laughs> is purposely dumb yeah i know but exactly i think they just put in this character to make it oh they, wouldn't I'm it be funny reason. yeah i and i i just went this guy's actually ruining the film for me if if they cut that character out i would have been happy I don't know about you guys. It wouldn't have changed anything in the movie. But yeah, he was just kind of randomly there. It was like, oh, we've still got a lot of budget left. Let's just spend it on this extra guy and make him funny. <laughs> they, they threw him in. They were like, oh, let's just, let's just throw the lad in there. Give him, give him a good little bit of experience. Mm. And I think... I... But like for me... No, you go. Oh, go on. No, no, <laughs> we, keep, we keep doing this. We actually keep doing this. Doing this one, okay. <laughs> but like, for me, a character that I really didn't like, and this is going to be controversial here, oh, here I go. think I'd... They they should just get rid of Elaine. Like I hated every scene with her. She was so slow in the way she talks. It's Julie Haggerty um who plays her. But like every conversation with her, I was like, just make it end because she talks like this really slowly, and all of her conversations are so dull, (laughs) and it just ruins the movie's pace because you're just sitting there waiting for her to finish talking, but he she just keeps going, and it's just frustrating. But that was the point of her character. But I like that. I like that because that was the point of her character. She like from right from the get go, she's meant to be. It's almost like she's like the actual actor or actress has actually forgotten her lines. That was the that was what I was seeing the comedy is because every time she spoke, it's like yes, okay, the pacing's ruined, but then you're kind of like, oh yeah, she she's she's pretending that she's actually <laughs> semi forgotten her lines. I think there was a few lines where she actually miss said some stuff. The same as what Ted did, you know, or he he says it in the wrong phrase. You know, I think a a Ted quote. I record is like, oh, we're going under and then back down again, and it's just like, do you mean down back under? It's just like, oh yeah, oh shit. <laughs> but I, but I, I think they should have made it sound like she was forgetting the lines a lot more. Then I don't know, just make her forget a complete line, and some other character reminds her of it. Just okay. play around with it, but don't just leave her to talk slowly. Because I'm sitting there just <laughs> scratching myself, just <laughs> make the scene. End. You know what? Know. You know what? Actually, I I have to praise. Um, the scene with Julie Haggerty where she, you know, where they turn the autopilot on no, and the no, autopilot no. starts to deflate. <laughs> and I honestly, that scene was, that had, that nearly had me in tears it, when I saw that. And I was like, I was chuckling quite a bit where she literally, okay, so the scene is here. The autopilot is on. It's a blow up, per, it's like a blow up version of an, air, you know, pilot. His name is Otto, by the way. His name is yeah. Otto, as himself. Referred to him by his name. Put some Otto. respect on his name. Suck nah, nah, Otto. listen. O- Otto. <laughs> <laughs> listen, you guys are sucking off Otto at this point, yeah? Um, <laughs> right, so Otto is a blow-up fake pilot on autopilot, and he literally starts to deflate, and Julie Haggerty's character, Elaine, has to literally blow him up again <laughs> and literally gets a pipe that is sort of around pubic area <laughs> shall we call it and it, and then the doctor walks in and he's like oh shit then and then just yeets himself back out <laughs> but even for after... me Otto was a better character 
than Elaine. Wow. <laughs> he was oh a lot funnier than Elaine. I'm sorry. I, I, I have to say it. <laughs> he was. I didn't fight him. <laughs> nah, nah. Like, Otto, Otto was funny. Like, but oh, come on. The, the, this is another scene that pissed me off. It's that ending scene where Otto fucking <laughs> flies the plane off. <laughs> That was a hilarious scene. No, what do you mean no. It's just that stupid. That that funny. was actually that's not that's not that's just stupid. That, that that there's a level of comedy where it's like again, it's on that fence. Do you take it seriously or do you take it as ridiculously stupid? This this film for me, like it, it shouldn't it should not have done that. Like it would have been funnier <laughs> if I don't know if the plane exploded and Otto went flying. I I don't know. It, it, oh. The plane the plane should <laughs> not have Otto. taken off. We, the we plane like should Otto. the plane should not have taken off. And then another inflatable Otto blown up to to, to fly it off. I I I didn't like that scene. That was just Listen, my opinion. I love that. Otto, that was a better Otto ending Otto than got, the Elaine and the other Otto, guy ending. Otto literally got aired. So oh, we can't wow. really say much more than get out of um, our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you know what? I what I found hilarious in that scene, like right at the end, was there's a female blow up version of Otto mm. that inflates herself right next to him, <laughs> and, and they, they live happily ever after. Come on, how would how would they blow each other though? If one of them deflates. <laughs> There's signs here that we can't talk about, right? Leave Otto's <laughs> life out talk, of this. We, listen, let's not attack Otto too much and talk about how well they portrayed um, and comedically portrayed stereotypes, mm. which was actually quite funny. Mm. Was, you know, um, they had... Um, well, the main stereotypes they had were most likely, I think it was Jive Dude 1 and 2, mm-hmm. and how well they were played out, I think, they did touch upon um, stereotypes really well. They they just kind of threw them all out. And they had was... the Israeli plane in there as well with the beard and the um. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw that, but my mum was hoovering. But what what did one of the things say to like kind of clear the airway? <laughs> I, I I couldn't remember what they oh, said. Oh, yeah, it just kind of <laughs> said, "Please move your plane out the <laughs> out of the runway." I think what else there was. I think. Um... There was that random scene where the plane starts to crash again, and then out of nowhere there comes a topless woman. Oh yeah, the topless why, woman. Why? Why? <laughs> yeah, why? <laughs> I, I was so confused. I was like, where? What? The? Why? What? I was very confused. I'm not gonna lie. Um, yeah, but they they that bu- had me they, flex for a minute. They built they built up the, the the kind of like the revealing obviously because when the yeah, plane the moments is... before it was juggling yeah 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 they see the <laughs> the coffee uh, juggling and then we we scan we pan over to see um, some someone's big bosoms obviously like <laughs> like uh, bosoms say bosoms <laughs> but <laughs> bosoms <laughs> <laughs> yeah you see these bosoms <laughs> wiggling around. <laughs> Bosoms. <laughs> or Aphrodite pillows. <laughs> they look fake, to be honest. <laughs> they probably were. I don't think. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to get into a debate about that. Let's not worry too much about whether they were real or not. Um, <laughs> the ones in the scene after were definitely real. Yeah. Right up in uh, front of the camera. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Disgust then. Disgust then. <laughs> But we talked about this film for quite a bit of time now. Um, so, that, I mean, there's so many points. So, so many points. Again, it's the same with Monty Python. You could talk about this film for ages and ages about each scene and breaking it down. But overall, like, you know, I, I know I see say this every podcast, but like, for me, my 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 rating has actually changed. Like after discussing Ooh. the opinions, yes, yes. <laughs> like and actually for the first time, I'm gonna have to put it down as a negative, as in my my original rating was gonna be high, which was gonna be a nine, but actually Whoa. like Whoa. that's way too Damn. high. And now is... because 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 <laughs> again, it was the same comedy wavelength as Monty Python. But I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna say it's still a solid movie, but. It's in the regions of seven point five to eight, like mm-hmm. that's that's where I'm rating it. And that that mm-hmm. that for me is I, I, I it's it's not deserved of a seven. I, I seven is way too low. So I I'd say seven point five to an eight is my rating. 
for this film. Okay, okay. I see. Right, let's hear yours. Because Adam's um, on the top end of the extreme, and you're on the other end of the extreme. Yes, I'm, I'm always the um, cup off, empty kind of guy, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> the water isn't there kind of guy. Um, <laughs> why isn't there alcohol in the glass? <laughs> <kind of guy? laughs> um, for me, first of all, I need to readjust my scoring here because I gave Monty Python a nine, wasn't it? Yep. Last mm. week. Which was way too high, I think. I need to readjust no, that. No, you can't. No, you can't go. You can't go back on that. You can't <laughs> go back on that. <laughs> Can I not? No, I'd no, love to readjust can't. it because I gave it way too high of a score. No, because if, I if re- realize there's funnier movies out there. If we re-review it, then maybe. But it's, it stands <laughs> okay, for okay. it. Is. I'll leave it there because <laughs> because of that, Good. this one is going to sound way worse. Because I, for me, this movie, there's funny scenes, there's obviously hilarious scenes, but the pacing really killed it for me. And it felt like a really dated movie because even with like a lot of the jokes, how it's making fun of the movies before it, I wasn't alive then. I don't get those jokes. Wow. I'm sorry. Shoot me. Um, but <laughs> not the Jaws reference. Not the Jaws. Have you never yeah, seen? Yeah, obviously Jaws? I got the Jaws reference, but the rest of the movie I didn't get a lot of the reference. Like they mentioned some other woman, <laughs> and I didn't get it. It's so because of Elaine, me... isn't it? <laughs> yeah, fucking Elaine. <laughs> Stupid ass, slow talking Elaine. <laughs> Gee, I rate this movie a um, solid six for me. Okay, I, I thought you were going to say five, but I'd be like, nah, nah, boost it, boost I it. I would have gone lower, but you know what? It was still funny, so uh, six. Six, cool, cool. Abs, go on, mate. Um, for me, what I'll do, I'll just give it a little bit of final finishing, polishing thoughts, really. Um, I think there was certainly areas where the movie had amazing irony. It was hyperbolic and over the top and wacky, which was great. Um, I think it was, you know, at some points it was ingenious movie making. The sort of antics they got up to within the actual airplane, they were they were kind of nice as well. Fucking, how's how's the lady managing to hang herself? How did the plane not blow up? How has my guy got a freaking knife to commit seppuku? These are questions that still boggle my mind. Um, another scene it's like the landing sequence it's the the crash positions it's don't the say the takeoff don't say the retake off no no um <laughs> bloody one of, no, that scene another, made sense i don't joke. know what you're complaining about no, 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 another, no, 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 no. another joke that actually that. sort of <laughs> another joke that actually made it into my little notebook here was i picked the wrong week to quit something i think those are really well <laughs> put in there um and uh well i think <clears throat> This movie from me gets at best a seven and a half from me Ooh. because there was uh, there was I don't want to give it a seven because it's bad enough to be a seven in my eyes, but there's certain areas which were really good because you know I was sort of trying to figure out whether they had mini sets or whether they had actual airplanes and you know what they did. So they that extra point five is for really good or if not ingenious movie making in certain areas the sort of repetition of certain jokes as well as um key bits within the scene especially the landing scenes which i think just gave it that 0. 0.5 um but yeah 7.5 from me boys and gents nice one ladies i see but why why was it not an eight then do you think it's not that great of a movie to be an eight it didn't it, it didn't make me laugh as much as Monty Python did. If you compare the reviews mm. from last week to this week, half our time in that one, this one we were actually debating stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Do you reckon last... you would have found this movie funnier if you hadn't seen Monty Python? No. Oh, okay. No. Because mm. Monty Python genuinely had me creasing. That scene with the Black Knight, nothing makes me laugh like that in this <laughs> film. That one scene gave that entire movie like freaking six marks and the rest of it played on. <laughs> Mm, like okay. this one this one is it's making the mark just about that's the thing with this film okay but that's an interesting point because if, if if say we did watch this film first and then went into monty python would you like because I, I, I'm, go, I'm gonna go into this because like if you're breaking you it down to. because then you go oh then airplanes copying this but then to be fair monty python came out first so then you gotta give credit to that so then my question is pretty much irrelevant 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least you tried. <laughs> it's your cake. And the thing is, Adam, let's not mention, you did say Monty Python is one of your favourite films. Yep. And rightly so. And I think Pranav and me agree with you on that one. But on this one, um, it's it's been a different story entirely. I've tried no, to see I'm, the benefits I'm, and the negatives. I'm glad I brought down Adam's rating. Your negativity, you. you know. I'm really happy about that. Thanks, you're, not in, you're not invited again. <laughs> it'll, just, it'll just be abs and Adam. Don't worry, guys. It'll be the double A. Uh, but that, I, th- I think that's that'll conclude for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed all the all the roasting uh, that we all did together. Um, be sure to um, check out all the podcasts; they're all available on Spotify and SoundCloud and YouTube. So they're all done. Links in the description. Just type in the AM Filmmaking Podcast. Don't forget that underscore. Uh, I'd like to thank Abs and Pranav once again uh, for coming onto no. the show. So. No worries, no worries. It's always a pleasure to uh, to be here and uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, guys. <laughs> Literally, but that's YouTube wise. <laughs> yeah. Um. So next next Thursday, uh, it'll be the final um day of the month for comedy. Um. So I'm going to be joined with Kerry, and hopefully, hopefully, maybe Abs and Pranav might want to jump on to watch a um a comedy. I, I, I can't remember. Oh, hang on a fucking now. What's it called? Did you say Legally Blonde? Legally Blonde. Yeah, yeah, but what, what, what's the uh, genre? What's up. the genre? Let me bring it up. One second. It's called Legally Blonde. A rom-com? Blonde. Yeah, Is it's it? a rom-com. Yep. Yeah. It's a rom-com. Because it, it says comedy romance, yeah. So it's, it's, it'd yep. be a comedy romance of Legally Blonde, uh, which was made in 2001. So Can I rate it now? No. <laughs> no, you got to watch okay. the film. <laughs> It, but, it's got Reese Witherspoon in it, so you know, yeah. big name, big yeah. name to start off the bat. So hopefully they'll jump on. Otherwise, it would just be me and Kerry. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, that that be it, guys. Uh, take safe. Uh, oh, why did I say take safe? <laughs> take six. You're about to say it. take six, guys. Take, and cut. <laughs> take six and over and out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take us out by munching on my orange. Yeah, yeah. If if you yeah, could actually let, go let for it. Do, yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's great. Do it again. Do it again. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big slice of an orange. But thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.